Restoring Your Voice With your host Rev. David C. McGuire Helping you to glorify God with your voice Alrighty then, everybody. I uh, hope this is going to work out today. The uh, new format here on uh, streaming service that I used to uh, get this out to everybody. Um, and that is, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Everything works, but uh got some stuff to get used to here on Restream uh, anyway. So uh, um, please excuse any hiccups. And if, if there are any hiccups today, then uh, now you know why. Because uh, they changed the format up. Uh, I don't quite like it. And I got to get used to it. But uh, so, like I said, please excuse any hiccups. Anyways, here we are. Here we are on this uh, Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024. Wow, already into the month of April. Where did the time go by? And so much, so much has happened uh, this year already, um, you know, especially in terms of the church. So the American church, especially. Um, very specifically, um, like I said, I'm not in anybody else's country, uh, so I, I don't, I don't know what you, necessarily what the church culture is like over there. I know where I'm at. I know whom God has called me to speak to um, a, as a prophet, and that is the church in America. I know that for sure. I've known this, uh, been sure of this calling uh, for years now. Uh, never, never doubted it one time. Never thought I was called to go international um, just is what it is but anyway um, today we're going to talk about get ready to be sifted um, now where is this from this is straight from the bible right and before we get started on any anything else i want to i want to bring up to you see if this will work oh, i worked there we go right there on your screen is in luke 22 31 and this here is at the end of Jesus's earthly ministry, uh, right uh, at the at the last supper. Um, and here, and I don't know why I'm saying English Standard Version on there. I want to use the NET for this. So let me check what's going on here. Uh, and when you have okay, I don't know why it's the English Standard Version. Let me. Uh, there's a reason why I'm changing translations, by the way. It's just because I, I, I was I was look, looking at this, I think it was yesterday, and it, something jumped out at me. So here we go. Now the translation I want to use. Now here, it says here, on my, on my end anyways, uh, Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has demanded to have you all to sift you like wheat. And that's there's a reason why I brought up this any using the NET. Um, not too much. I really like it. And I might use it as my regular uh Bible for for everything, by um, but it says here to sift you all. Now many translations uh, omit the word all, and and I want to bring this up to you that here it says that this pronoun this pronoun is plural in the Greek, so it refers to all the disciples of which Peter is the representative. So not just Peter, but this applies to all. Now I want you. I'm going to read further on, and we'll, we'll talk about it. And we got a lot more scriptures to go through. Uh, so, uh, so verse 32, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Now that also caught my attention. I've read this verse uh, more, more than one time, which I've said before, where, where Peter did indeed turn away. So he, he needed to repent and he needed to turn back to the Lord. And, and that's what this, that's why Jesus is using this language here is when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers okay yet peter ended up what he ended up denying jesus and um quite frankly the other disciples that were present um did the same thing uh as well as the uh the other uh, apostles so when it says disciples it's meant not just the apostles but all of the disciples we know that <clears throat> at the at the hour of jesus's need there's only one apostle, one this uh, that stood by Jesus, and we know that was John the Beloved, okay, who wrote the book of Revelation, the, the Gospel of John, as well as the three different epistles here. And there, there's a reason this is this is important to know, okay? And I want to use this translation because we all, all of us who are called by God, 
need to be sifted. And I was thinking this through. Um, and, you know, God is, is a God who allows us to be sifted, to be used by him, to to increase, if if you will, our impact for him. So this isn't for us to get rich off of. And I, I believe one of the specific recorded accounts that we can read is in the book of Job. Now, we see this behind the scene taking place. We see where Satan approaches God on the throne. We see this happening. We see this playing out. And we see where Satan, you know, asks God, can I, can I go, can I go make trouble for Job? Basically, no big paraphrase here. And God allowed it to happen. And when, God, and, and when Job still did not despise God, and then God, Job went, back, or Satan went back to God. And he asked God, hey, I, I, you know, if I even go even further, I'll bet, I'll bet you you'll see how unrighteous Job really is. And we know the story. Um, God allows Satan to bring harm to Job to a certain point. So let me make that point, point up to a certain point. And at the end, we see where Job received more back from God for this, right? Uh, we know where he received double, all right, um, for this because he endured to the end. Now, he didn't do it perfectly. We know that. We know that that God comes down, shows up. Um, <clears throat> he rebukes Job a little bit, you know, just because he got out of hand a little bit there. But nevertheless, nevertheless, it wasn't just, just, just want you to keep this in mind. It wasn't Job whom God was about to punish, though. Right to the end of the book, you'll you'll see where God really rebukes his three quote unquote friends, and and uh Job has to make sacrifices for them so that God will not punish them. Just just remember that. Because we're we're in a time, friends, I fully believe, of severe sifting. And a lot of people thought they were ready for it, but they were never ready for it. A lot or and a lot of people have been exposed. Now I put out the Lord had me prophesy. So the Lord speaking through me had me put out a prophetic word. If you haven't read it yet, I urge you to go on to Substack, go to restoring your voice there, and read this word called exponential exposure. Exponential exposure. And unfortunately, it has been coming to pass a lot. Unfortunately, and I say this unfortunately because I want to bring this up to you real quickly here. Like I said, I'm getting used to this new format. So, so hold on a second. Uh, see if I can share this tab instead. Go back here. Okay, good. So we have that. Uh, let me let me just yank this here. Put this here like this, and let's see if we can get it on your screen. So there we go. Um, so I want to highlight to you part of this prophetic word uh, from the Lord. Um, and let's see, it says here, we, right here, we will not, we will see not only the prominent leaders being exposed, but entire leadership teams as well. Okay. And we will see not only how deep the cancer in the church, but we will also see the numerous tumors. Okay. We've seen this with IHOP this year. Um, if, if you don't, if you don't know, um, let me take this off the screen for a second here. Uh, IHOP has announced that they are temporarily closing. I think what's going to happen is they're going to basically rebrand. Um, that was just put out last night um, by somebody else on Substack. Uh, I think it was about 10.30 or so was put out last night. Um, and the entire leadership team has been exposed as corrupt. And now up to this date, by the way, um, up to this date, there has been zero third-party investigation with IHOP. They have, so so back in October is when Mike Bickle's sins were exposed for all to see. And as time went on, we saw where other sins of IHOP have been exposed for all to see. And, and we see this happening now. So 
And we also see, unfortunately, something else happening, which is another part of this prophetic word. Um, let's see. Now, this part of the prophetic word, before I tell it to you, is something that I was very hesitant, and I thought, nah, it's got to be my flesh speaking out. I don't know if it's God or not. But it says here, we will see the main sins of abuse and sexual abuse being exposed. We will see pedophilia, which was thought to mainly exist in the Roman Catholic Church to be exposed in Protestant circles. Now, like I said, when I put that out, actually when I was writing this, as the Lord was moving through me, I, I, I doubted, just to be clear, just to be, hey, I'm, I, I was, I was saying, oh, this can't be true. I was thinking in the back of my head. But if you go on to the Roy's report, R-O-Y-S, the Roy's report, you will see quite a few church leaders being exposed for this very thing, this pedophilia, okay? Um, and it's an unfortunate thing. And, I, and this never had to happen with people. Um, now, how long these men have dealt with this kind of thing or sexual morality of kind, I, I don't know. I'm not in their heads. I, I, I don't go uh, reading in detail every article about this. But I believe that this never had to happen for, for some of these people. I, I fully believe that. I fully believe that this is a warning. and should be a wake-up call to all of us, by the way. Um, and the unfortunate part of these people being exposed like this is not just what's happened, happening in their life, marriages and families, and even their local church body, but, but what this impact has for the greater body, the greater church body across America. Because understand this, folks. Understand. If we fall into sin and we get exposed for it, no matter who you are, okay, no matter who you are, that impact is far wider than you can know. It's not only in your own family, okay? It's it's not only uh, necessarily in your local church body, but in the community. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I don't have, I have a very small following across different social media platforms. I know here on YouTube I have 411, which is like a minute amount of subscribers, for instance, but we'll just take that number, right? Twitter, I have the largest following there, and Facebook, I have... Oh, I don't know right now, 300 something, but we'll just take the smallest number. We'll take the number of subscribers on restoring your voice on, on YouTube, right? Think about it. If, if I, if I fall into sin, if I, if I get exposed in the public, so that is out there now for every one of my subscribers to know it's out there as well for the critics to see and say, aha, I knew it, whether critics of the charismatic, whether whether or the critics of, of Christianity in general. Oh, now now look, wow, look at that. See what I'm saying here? Now it causes you to doubt things, maybe. Right? And those doubts filter down. Right now, only that, but but now my sin and gets uh, affects my lo local church body. My sin affects my family for generations, by the way. It affects my wife, it affects my children, and it will affect their children, guaranteed. There's a reason why the Bible says that the sins of, that, that are passed down to these different generations, there is a reason God gives that warning, because it is a very true warning that we oftentimes fail to heed because we take sin lightly. But I'm telling you, surely, however, that there is hope. Okay, I'm not here to, to browbeat anybody. I'm not here to... Um, make you feel bad. I'm telling you that God wants to sift you for his good purposes, for his glory, wants to sift all of us. Okay. But we have to be willing to let it happen and it's not going to feel good. But Peter, who, who Jesus mentioned specifically, right? Remember he didn't do so well. He got a little bit cocky, got arrogant. I believe there's a lot of pride in him. You know, no, no, not saying I'm better than Peter was. No, not, not saying that at all. But he had um, something to say. So, oop. and so let me try to bring this back up on your screen here. 
Um, see, so, oh, oh, see, let me go here. Um, okay, how do I get that back up on your screen? Hold on a second, folks. Let me uh, see. This is a new format for me to get used to. So here we go. Roman. Nope. Second Peter. So we're going to go to Second Peter here. Let's see if this works. Aha. So like I said, this is a new format to be used for. But here is Peter writing. All right. The very same Peter that Jesus said, you all are going to be sifted. But when you turn back to me, Peter, I want you to lead from the front the rest of the disciples. I know I just paraphrase that there but on your screen here and this is about as big as i can make it well let me see if i can make it a little bit bigger for you ah there we go so there is that right there a little bit bigger for you um it says here peter writing here i can pray this because his divine power has bestowed on us every necessary i'm oh, sorry everything necessary for life this is, by the way second peter um chapter one Verse three, uh, for the one who has called us by his own glory and excellence through these things, he has bestowed on us his precious and most magnificent promises so that by means of what was promised, we may become partakers of the divine nature after escaping the worldly corruption that is produced by evil desire for this very reason. And by the way, Peter, like I said, is speaking here from experience. Um, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith excellence and to excellence knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. Verse 7, to godliness, brotherly affection, to brotherly affection, unselfish love. Verse 8, for if these things are really yours and are continually increasing, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in your pursuit of knowing our Lord Jesus Christ more intimately. And here comes a warning in verse 9. But concerning the one who lacks such things, he is blind. That is to say, he is nearsighted, since he has forgotten about the cleansing of his past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to be sure of your calling and election. For by doing this, you will never stumble into sin. For this uh, for thus an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly provided for you. Okay, so that's a good hope from Peter there. That's a uh, warning as well. Okay, he's saying is add to this one and then the next and then the next. We can't, and he's, if I were to paraphrase, we can't live this Christian life without any of these things. But it, we have to start somewhere. However, However, we can't simply add, okay, there must be stuff in us that is removed. First, we see this, uh, this, this illustration um, used when we see stuff like the Fuller's soap or things like that. And, 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 that, and that's just, you know, used to purify metal, right? We, we see this, this, this type of stuff used by God, right? purified, you know, refined as gold. Well, what does that mean? That means the dross, the impurities in that gold must be taken out for us to remain, for us to be pure. But if we refuse the process, folks, it will be disastrous. If we short circuit the process, it will be disastrous. Guaranteed. Why? Because the Bible tells, I just read it to you. The Bible tells us if we don't go through this process of refinement, which is not going to feel good, it does not feel good and it will hurt. I can guarantee it. You know me. I'm not going to mince words. I'm not here to provide you with a false hope. I am here to, to spur you on. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to exhort you. Absolutely. But I, but I must be truthful. This process does not feel good. This sifting hurts. Ask if, if one day, you know, when, when we, when we, when we uh, are with God uh, in his glory. When we're with God in his glory one day, you know, I guarantee Job is not going to tell us, oh yeah, it was not too bad to go through. Even Paul himself, who went through so many different trials and tribulations, yet called them light and momentary affliction. But if I, but if you ask the apostle Paul, I guarantee that he's not going to tell you, oh yeah, I felt great. 
I want more of it. I don't think anybody is going to ever do that. But it's needed. It's absolutely needed. If we want to produce godly character, then the ungodly characteristics in us must be gotten out. We must be willing to be conformed into the very image of Christ, as the Bible tells us. Right? We know that the Bible tells us and promises us that he who began a good work in us is faithful and just to complete it until the day of redemption. Now, that day of redemption, it will be one of two things. Either when we when we die and we move and we and we uh, come, come into heaven or when Jesus returns. One of those two things is the day of redemption for us. But we must be willing to let the Lord do his good work in us. Now, you mean now we you may believe what you believe. I believe what the scriptures say. And God doesn't force himself on us. I don't see that anywhere in scripture. I don't see anywhere in scripture any time that God ever forced himself on anyone. Thinking back to the Garden of Eden, another example, I believe, of a testing. Another example, I believe, of sifting, right? When Satan comes in, uh, comes into the garden, right? I believe that full, full, fully that God allowed Satan to go into the garden. And he tempted them. He tempted Adam and Eve, right? And they failed miserably. God wasn't there controlling them like robots. Okay, he wasn't dictating everything that they would do or not do, right? He gave them a choice. Just like every single one of us has a choice, first and foremost, to accept or reject God as our Lord and Savior, right? We have that choice, right? There's nothing in the Bible that, that, that explicitly tells me otherwise. Nothing in the Bible tells me that God only saves a certain amount of people that he only died for a certain elect he didn't do no no that is that is damnable heresy but god doesn't force himself on us if we don't want to go through the process god will take his hands off if we if we really don't want to or if we're in the process and we want to make an exit right we're, we're in that process on the road on the highway we'll say we want to take the exit god's not going to say or not, God is not going to stop us from taking the exit. He may warn us, but he won't stop us from doing it. We can be our worst enemy, but if we're willing to go through this, I guarantee you, friends, we will come out the other side shining of God's character and his presence, friends. We, we see this, and we'll go to this one next. So let me close out the one from, we were in Peter, right? So let's go to Romans. Let's go here. Um, make it bigger again. Here we go. And it says here in Romans, therefore, since we have uh, Romans chapter five, starting in verse one, therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained access into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. Verse three. Not only this, but we also rejoice in sufferings. How many times have you heard a message like that? Oh, man, we, you know. How many times have you ever heard a message from Paul Butch about rejoicing in suffering? I don't know about you, but I have not very, not, I, I could probably, I can't even think off the top of my head whom I've heard preach about this, whom I've heard teach specifically on the topic of rejoicing in suffering. I I could think of one maybe who's done it, but as a whole, no. Okay, going back to the scriptures again. Uh, Paul writing here. Not only this, but we rejoice. We also rejoice in suffering, knowing. Why do we rejoice? Why? Well, how can we do this? Knowing that suffering produces endurance. So we have the first point here. Suffering produces endurance. Why? Because we need that endurance. Right? This is a race. Paul makes this clear. This life is a long distance race. It is not a sprint, folks. We will need endurance to go to them, but we will not receive such endurance unless, unless this, this ungodly impatience 
it's gotten out of us. See, especially in America, right? We're so used to the now culture, right? And as somebody who lived overseas for quite a bit, uh, for almost a decade, it, it it's mind-boggling to me, right? The things that Americans will complain about. It's mind-boggling. We want it now. We want it as quick yet. Yet the most quality things are not produced quickly, friends. I mean, what would you rather have? We'll say, how about this? You know, you want to get a frozen burrito and nuke it, right? Yeah. By nuking it, you'll be able to eat it faster. But what if you went to a Mexican restaurant and you have and you had to have a, a burrito freshly made for you? Now, I'm here in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we have a lot, I mean tons, of Mexican restaurants. And, and, and you know, somebody I met here, who is now my friend, took me out for breakfast there. And I had, um, they call it a Mexican taco. I mean, that, that thing was big. I mean, we're talking burrito side, and they call it a taco, a breakfast taco. I would call it a breakfast burrito. But anyway, let me just tell you what, that thing, yeah, I, you know, I had a weight on it. There's some very good types of meat in there, some egg in there, some bacon in there, cheese on it, and it was, ooh, it was wonderful. And it doesn't compare to any type of taco or burrito that I could get from a fast food joint or a gas station. Why? Because... It took they took the time to fix it and cook it. And nothing rushed is ever as good as something takes the time. You know, say Fong Kong jewelry, you know that jewelry produced in China, you know that stuff, uh, or or anything produced in China for for that matter. Really, honestly, it breaks right away. It doesn't. It won't last. It won't have endurance. Versus if you buy something made in America, you know it's going to stand the test of time. I you know I have a tool set. I have a tool set that my father passed on to me. And he bought those tools, these wrenches and these sockets in 1972. 1972, we're in 2024. Okay? So what are we talking here, folks? Over 50 years, these tools have lasted. I have them right now in my garage. Okay? I have them, right, I have them in my garage right now. I've used them. 50 years, over 50 years, these tools have lasted. I mean, I, check, check that out. Over 50 years. Versus a tool that says made in China or Taiwan or one of those places, which breaks, you know, probably not even a year of usage, at least from my experience. The point being is perseverance. Yes. You can have it now, but it's not going to be as good as, as waiting. And we need this gotten out of us if we're going to be used by God. Okay. Um, again. Um, okay. So now we see here um, endurance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through, our, through the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. Let me just tell you. We will not endure. We will not endure to the end without endurance and without the hope, right? We see this. Um, uh, yeah, and in, in Hebrews chapter eleven, we see this pointed out as well, right? What is what is what is this definition of faith? This faith that we're told, without it, we will not see God, right? Faith. What is this? What is this called? This is what is what is faith? In 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 chap in Hebrews eleven, right? It's the substance of things not yet seen, the substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. In other words, we hope one day we will meet Jesus. We hope and we and we wait until this creation no longer groans and Jesus returns and and we get to return with Him, right? Uh, we we hope to stand in the presence of God one day. We hope for sickness and disease and death to finally, finally one day where we can firmly say hope, uh, sorry, where we can firmly say death, where's your victory? 
grave. Where's your sting? It's not yet. We don't, we don't get to say that just yet. But one day we will. But existing in this world is not easy. Even, especially being in this world, but not of this world, is not easy, folks. Not easy for anybody by any stretch of the imagination. We're, we're, we're constantly bombarded with, with, with sin, left, right, center. You know, when we wake up throughout the day, when we lay down, in our dreams even, we're, we're, we're bombarded. How are we going to endure to the end? Friends, we let God produce these godly characteristics in us. That's how we do it. We submit to the will of God. That's what we do. We got to be willing. And we got to be willing to realize that God will help us to get back up. Friends, none of us are going to walk this life perfectly. And we know because the Bible tells us. And the Bible tells us, though the righteous may fall. In Proverbs. Though the righteous may fall, he will rise up. He will get back up again and again and again and again and so on and so forth. That's a promise for you. That's a promise for me. That's a promise for every single one of us. Every single one of us who are of God. For you, for me. And I'm trying to provide you with, with hope today, friend. But I'm telling you right now, if we don't let it happen, we're, it's not going to produce anything. Okay? <laughs> At, at best, what may happen is we may squeak our way into, into glory. I don't want to squeak my way into glory. Let me tell you what. I want to fulfill what God wants me to do on this earth for as long as he wants me to do it for. Have I done it perfectly? Oh, no way. Not even close. Not even close. Have I, have I messed up along the way? You bet. More than you'll ever know. More than you'll ever know. But because God is God, and the only thing I've done was submit to, to the process. I'm still here able to talk to you today. I'm right here. I'm right here. An example of scripture being fulfilled. I told tell you what I told you. I have messed up more than you'll ever know in more ways than you'll ever know. But the fact that I'm sitting here today on this show trying to help you out too is a testament to what the scriptures say. And we see here, let's see, we'll go next. Oh, Lord, I did it again. See, I, I, I closed something out and I didn't want to do it. Um, hold so one second. Let me bring it back up for you. I know things are looking weird on your screen. So bear with me one second. So here we go, James. Right now, I talked about temptation and I talked about that kind of thing right there to you. And I, and I did it for a good reason. Okay. I did it for a good reason. It says here in the book of James, chapter one, um, Starting in verse 2, my brothers and sisters, consider it nothing but joy. There it is again, when you fall into all sorts of trials. Again, we, we see this terminology used about joy and suffering, joy and trials. Chapter, verse 3, and so this will really clinch it up. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect effect that you will be perfect and complete, not deficient in anything. Read that again. Read that again. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So if we're not tested, folks, if we're not tested and tried, what's, you know, if we don't let that happen, then the impurities that are in us are not going to get out of us. And at the beginning of the show, right, I showed you what the Lord had me prophesy. And I didn't put it out as an annual word. I, I, don't, I, I don't really believe that there's a such thing as annual prophecies. But I put out to you what's happening now. And, and I am sure, and now I'm going to speak to you prophetically. I'm absolutely sure there are people out there right now, which is why you need to share this. You need to like it and you need to share it and with as many people as you possibly can share it. Tag people and email them, text them, whatever the case may be, because I believe that there are people out there who's, who don't have to go into public exposure of sins. Now, let me just also uh, warn you, if your heart and if you rejoice when people are publicly exposed for your sins, you need it. You need God badly. 
Okay, nobody should ever rejoice over anybody falling into sin. Nobody should ever rejoice over anybody getting exposed for those sins. Nobody should ever rejoice. And if you rejoice in that, you do not have the heart of God. Let me just tell you that straight up. Okay, straight up. You can probably shut, shut, me, shut me off. I'm subscribed, unfollow me, but I don't play that game. But there are people out there who don't have to fall into this. And I believe that even right now as I'm speaking to you, the Lord is showing me. There are people out there. You have a chance. You have a chance right now to repent. You have a chance to get right with God. And, and, and God will spare you from that public shame. God will spare you from that. Or you can harden your heart today. You can harden your heart today and refuse that. You can refuse it. You can be exposed. You can be shamed. You know, you can be another Mike Bickle. Okay. Uh, you, you can become another uh, Jimmy Swagger, right? People like that who've been publicly exposed. But I'm telling you, that doesn't have to happen. Submit yourself. So elsewhere in the book of James, it tells us what? Resist the devil and he must flee. He doesn't have a choice. By doing what? Drawing near to God. Let me tell you what. In the if if you are not prayed up and you don't have the word of God in you, when the hour of your trial comes upon you, it's too late. But but that does not have to happen. That doesn't have to happen. God resists the proud, but does what? Gives grace to the humble. And that word grace, by the way, friends. The, the definition of, of, of that word in the Greek, okay? That, 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 that word charis in the Greek. When it's used in the New Testament, the majority of times it talks about an empowering. Okay, yes, it, it can also mean that, that God gives us what we don't deserve. Praise God for that. But more often than not, the definition of that word means an empowerment. God will, when we submit to God, when we say, God, not my will, but your will be done, as Jesus did on the mount. Now, I'm not saying we will we'll ever go through anything what Jesus went through, but I'm just saying, Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Didn't he say that? If we're willing to have that attitude, if we're willing to do that every single day, God will give us the grace. He will empower us to defeat temptation. He will empower us to run a race with endurance. He will empower us to get up out of bed every day. He will empower us so that when we stumble, we will get back up. He will empower us to turn back to him. He will empower us to repent. He will empower us to preach the message of God. He will empower us, empower us, empower us, whatever it is that he has called us to do. He will empower us to do so, friends. But we got to be willing to submit to God. We have got to be willing to submit to the process. We have got to be willing to say, God, I want those godly characters produced in me for your glory. We have got to be able to do that. And we can. I'm trying to encourage you today. Yes, there is warning. But guess what? Warnings can also be encouragement. Right? I can, I can warn you of the cliff up ahead. Turn around now. So I'm encouraging you. I'm exhorting you. Turn around now before you run over that cliff. Go back. Go the other way. Trust me. The other way is worth it. It's up to you. It's kind. It's 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 a, it's a thousand percent up to you how how, how life is going to go from here on out. Every day is a choice, friends. Let me tell you what the things of this life, the things of this life, you know, aren't one big thing. That's not what matters most. Those little choices every day and throughout each each and every day. That 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 build up, that that add up together for good or for evil, for Satan or for God. Which one? Which one? Your, your choice, right? The Bible is full of choices. I present to you this day, right? We see this life and death, blessings and curses, right? Choose this day whom you will serve. We see that, right? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's my friends, will you do that? Will you come into an agreement with me? Will, will you proclaim that? Whatever else anybody else chooses. As for me, my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me, I'm going to set the example for the next generation. 
I'm going to set the example for my children. I'm going to set the example for my grandchildren. I'm going to set the example. I will serve the Lord. Everybody else may choose not to. Everybody else may compromise. But as for me and my house, we have made the choice. We will serve the Lord. Don't worry about what everybody else does or gets away with. Don't, 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 don't even look at that. You have to make a choice, and, 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 and we have to keep our eyes fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. That's what matters. Don't worry about what they do over there or what they allow over there, what that church does and what that church allows and preaches. Stop. You stay in your lane. What mission does God have for you? Choose to do that and choose to do it with excellence. Choose to, to realize you are not perfect. I realize I am far from perfect, friends. Let me tell you what. I am so far from perfect as it as it could be. Okay? I am hardly there yet. I can I will be able to claim I'm there when I'm there with God. When I'm in the presence of God, then I can claim that. Until then I can't claim it. I can't claim myself better than any other person. But man, do I want God to produce that in me? Yeah. Yeah. Do do I want more godly character produced in me? Absolutely. Do I want more of what God has for me? Yes, I do. Do I want the same for you? Absolutely. And that's why I'm doing this today. I don't have to do this. You know, I, I don't have, I know what the Bible says. I know what these scriptures say. I love the Bible. I love the word of God. Right? But I want to share with you. I want to, I want to be able to help you. I want to be able to encourage you. I want to be able to tell you, hey, don't go there. Don't, it's not worth it, friends. I tell, you, I tell you, a lot of people being exposed for pedophilia, a lot of these pastors and church leaders and ministry leaders that have been exposed so far, like I said, go look on the Royce Report, R-O-Y-S. I believe that, that's, that a bunch of them never had to, it never had to uh, come to that. I believe that a lot of them, it never started off that way. It started off with other types of sexual morality. Let me tell you, friends, it's not worth it. Let, let me let, as we as we as we wind down the show, okay. Especially for you guys out there, don't look at pornography. It's not worth it. If you've never looked at it, don't start now. Don't start now. It is not worth it. I just it, it, it gets this type sexual immorality gets its hooks into you, and, and, and I don't know if you've ever fished, but fish hooks have a barb on it, right? So that means when it gets hooked in, the fish can't easily yank it out. You know, like, you know, so if you're fishing at your fishing rod and you feel a tug of a fish, you first, before you start reeling anything, and you you give that, that fishing rod a, a tug to get that, to set the hook in the fish. And then you can start reeling it in. And if you've ever, you know, caught fish and you try to get that hook out, you know what I mean? And it's not easy. And it's the same way with sexual morality. Friends, Paul mentioned specifically every other sin is outside of the body, but sexual immorality infects our body. It's not worth it at the end of the day. It's not worth it. Yes, God can redeem us. Praise God. Yes, he can forgive us. Wash us clean, purify us. It's, but, but the whole sexual immorality bit is not worth it. Stay away from it. Run. Why do you think we are encouraged to flee? from it. We have to flee from it. We're not even supposed to go near it. If you want to stay free from it, don't get the hook in you in, in the first place, friends. It's not worth it. And I'm speaking as somebody who was once addicted to pornography. Okay, I, I got a whole uh, teaching. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. And Restoring Your Voice, just look up Freedom From Porn eCourse. It's there. It's there for you. Why? Because I had to learn from, ex I, I know, I've been on both sides of this thing. Don't even don't even go there. Don't even go there because it will destroy your life. And we see this happening. Whether whether it takes a few years or whether you're like Mike Bickle and it takes 40 years. Or how how however long he, you know, it, it, it affected him. And now look at this. IHOP is in, in such dire straits right now. Friends, it doesn't have to happen. Submit to God. Choose the path of humility. Choose it. And if you do, I guarantee you have chosen life. You have chosen 
the path that Jesus wants to walk or that Jesus wants you to walk. So I hope this helped you out. I hope this encouraged you. Please, 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 please share this with people. Hit that like button, okay? Every interaction gets this content recommended for, for others, okay? So thank you, everybody. Um, I won't be on tomorrow. I have a doctor's appointment. So I don't know if I, I, I doubt I'll get back in time to do a show, but I could. We'll see how that rolls. But I have a please play. I have a, a, a an appointment with a GI doctor tomorrow afternoon. Um, so there is that. Yeah. So with that, everybody, um, be blessed and uh, 